Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. To start off this year, we're talking about pivot chord modulation. So this is a brief overview of what we have to deal with with pivot chord modulation. If you look on the screen here, I've put two lines of the seven diatonic chords with their qualities. Ones, fours and fives majors, twos, threes and six minors, seven diminished. But notice how I've got them lined up here. In both cases, I'm starting on the pitch C. Now, for the first line, I'm in C major. In the second line, I'm in G major. So when I start on C and C major, obviously it's a one chord. But when I'm on starting on G major, C is the four chord. I do it this way because when we talk about modulation, we are changing the key center for a substantial period of time. This is a bit of a change from tonicization, which was a localized event where we soon returned to the home key. In a modulation, we're going to be staying in the new key for a while. And one of the easiest ways to get there is through the diatonic pivot chord. So let's take a look at these two scales here and how I've got them lined up. If we look at the seven diatonics in C, we see the qualities. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and then of course with the repeat of tonic, back to major. Um, now when we look at the same seven chords in the key of G, but starting on C, starting on the subdominant, what do we see here? Well, four is major, five is major, six is minor, seven is of course diminished, tonic would be major, two is minor, three is minor, and four is major. If you look at where the qualities line up, in the key of C, your tonic is major, in the key of G, your subdominant is major, which means that these th chords are going to be exactly the same in terms of their pitch content. Both major triads, it's just that contextually one is the tonic and one is the subdominant. Now if you look at the two chord here in C, we see it's minor, D, F, A. If we look at the five chord in G, that's major, D, F sharp, A. These two are not the same. What about three? Three in C, so E, G, B, is that the same quality as the six in the key of G? Why, yes, it is. So there's a connection there as well. Let me draw a line here and show that there's a connection. All right, what about four? Four in the key of C is a major triad, F, A, C. Well, in the key of G, we don't have F. We have F sharp. We have F sharp, A, C. What's the quality of that? That's right, diminished. So these are not the same. Five and one, well, they're both major. So we would have the same here. Six and two, both minor. So we can have that, and that's fine. And then one and four would be the same, because they're just like at the beginning here. But seven diminished versus three minor, not the same. So in these four spots, really, in the key of C, one, three, five, and six, have the exact same quality as the four, six, one, and two chords in the key of G. Which means that if you want to get from the key of C to the key of G, which would be a very good place to go, we like to modulate to the dominant, then all you have to do is get to one of these four chords, one, three, five, or six in the key of C, and you can then pivot seamlessly into the key of G. Same chord takes on a different function. One might become four, or three might become six. Five might become one, six might become two. And then when it's time to get back to C, you can simply reverse the process. In minor keys, there are some differences, and we'll talk about that in class, but the principle is essentially the same. When you have two different keys and the qualities of a chord line up, whether or not it's in one key or the other, you can use that chord as a pivot. Let's take a look at a practical application of this. We have here, let me just minimize that, there we go. We have here the first movement of uh, Clementi's Sonata, Opus 36, number 2. We've looked at the number 1 Sonata from the Opus 36 set of several times. It's the you know, very famous C major. Da, 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 da. This one is the G major one. I put the first 22 bars up here. Let's listen to this, and then let's go back and patch up what's going on here. G 
jaunty little tune. Uh, what key are we in here at the beginning? The correct answer is, of course, G major. And we could analyze this whole thing in the key of G major if we wanted to, but something starts happening around bar 7. You see a whole bunch of C sharps creeping into the mix. And anytime you see a non-diatonic pitch come in, that you're in, something is about to happen. So if we were analyzing this, let me see if I can get these to line up. This first bar is pretty clearly a G major chord. You know, G, B, D, B, outline in the bass there. Same thing happens in the second bar, so we'll skip over that. And then what happens here in bar three? Well, let's take a look at it. We have D, which fits into one, but then we have F sharp, A, D, F sharp. It looks like we have a 5-6 chord, and then we return to 1. This is ton tonic, dominant, tonic. This is our standard move. And then we have a 1 chord again, which I'm repeating it there just so it's very clear here. What do we have here in bar 6? Well, we have G, B, and E, and the same thing in the right hand, B, G, E. What is that? Well, in the key of G, an E minor chord would be 6, 6. But there's something interesting that happens. I'm going to move this down just a little bit so I have a little more space to work with here. If we keep analyzing this in G, we end up with all sorts of crazy stuff going on. I can, I can keep this in G, and it's fine. And we end up with a, looks like a cadential 6, 4 over 5, so... Bear with me as I make this work. And all of this is over 5. That's a really convoluted symbol. Um, and then we'd end up with 5. A whole lot of 5 here. Look at all the D major scales going on. This is an awful lot of five. Matter of fact, we keep going on five here, and we're thinking, goodness, for something that purport, purports to be in G major, I'm not feeling the G major at this point. Then we have what appears to be a six, six, and then a five, a five, and a five again, and that five just keeps going all the way through here. And then a similar progression here at the end, another 6-6 six, six to 5-5 five, five to 5. So to end a section like that on the dominant doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. So as we look at this, we think, this can't be right. Where does it start getting weird? Well, it starts getting weird right around here. So I'll get rid of this. If we were to analyze this in D major from this point forward, and again, we'll be in D major now. That makes perfect sense as a cadential 6-4 in the key of D major. And then we continue on here with a 1. And then we've got a whole lot of 1. Continuing all the way down through here. And then look at this. 2, 6, 5, 1. And then it just stays on 1 for a long time. And then the process basically repeats itself. This analysis makes a lot more sense. It's cleaner. It's more elegant. So somehow we've got to get from G major in these first six bars to D major from 7 to 22. So I'm going to kind of back this out here, this in position here. And we do it here in bar 6 at the pivot. So I'm going to come over here, and if we assume that we're in the key of D at the same time here for this one bar, one beat, this one bar, that's all. One measure, this chord. What is an E minor chord in the key of D? That's right, it's two. So what we have here is a two six in the key of D. This is our pivot. And sometimes, I'll see if I can draw these little lines on here so you can 
really see them come in. It's being a little squirrely here, that's okay. Now the lines don't want to come in for whatever reason. That's fine. But what we have here is at this point, we pivot. A 6-6 six, six in the key of G becomes a 2-6 in the key of D. And then that allows us to have a very elegant and simple analysis for the rest of it. So listen to it with this in mind one more time. Clearly in G. 6-6 six, six in G becomes 2-6 in D. And the rest of the segment, seg segment is clearly in D major. So this is what we're dealing with. This is the beginning of pivot chord modulation. If you have any further questions about it, I'll be happy to talk about it in class. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.